Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and are you ready for a pen test? This is actually the first reply I get when someone reaches out to me and says, hey, I'd like to get a pen test done, but are you ready? There's a lot that goes into the actual testing, but before then, there's a lot that you should probably cover to make sure things are patched, make sure things are up to date, because pen testing can be an expensive process. And you really want to make that pen test engineer work for their money. You want them to not find the easy things that you'll go, well, I guess I could have just done that. I guess I could have updated the servers. I probably could have closed a few of those ports. You want them to come in and look for the hard things. You want to leverage all the skill they bring and say, I want them to look for the angles I may have missed because that's ultimately what you're paying them for. And you got to remember, they're generally looking for things on a, how easy is it? They're going to try the obvious. Did you patch it? They're going to try the obvious. Did you close RDP? And then keep escalating from there. But there's a lot of scoping that goes in this. There's a lot of details that goes involved in myself not being a pen tester. Matter of fact, if you reach out and call us for a pen test, I refer it over to Jason Slagle, president of CNWR and good friend of mine. Jason Slagle is an excellent security researcher, and he's going to join us in an interview here to define what a pen test is, what a pen test isn't, and how you can prepare for it. We're also, as I said, going to be referencing some of the links down below because I want to make sure you have plenty of resources to gain a good understanding and a lot of things you can just do yourself to take a look at your network and take a look at your systems and make sure that you are prepared for the next step. All right, and Jason's going to tell us exactly what a pen test is, or actually, we probably back it up. Do you need one? That's yeah. where we should really start. <laughs> yeah, we uh, it's it's an interesting question because uh, we you know we get asked this all the time, like, oh, I need a pen test. Can you do a pen test for me? And after like a twenty minute conversation, what comes out of it is that's not actually what they're after. Yeah. You, you need it. You probably may even need a vulnerability scan if you haven't even done that. And this is some stuff you can even start doing yourself, uh, yeah. poking away at it in like Kenny, you said, and this, well, I say you said, because me and you've talked so much about this, but for yeah. the audience, it's really comes down to how the, the pen test is going to be conducted. You're going to pop the easy stuff first. So you hopefully yep. you have the really easy, obvious things fixed first, right? From my hell of perspective, the job of a pen tester is to break into whatever system you give them, right? Like escalate if that's in scope, move laterally if that's in scope and write up a, uh, a list of their findings. And in most cases, it doesn't necessarily matter unless you specifically call something out of scope or, you know, they're touching things that are off limits. It doesn't necessarily matter to them how they do it. So if you don't kill the low hanging fruit, they're going to totally take advantage of the low hanging fruit. And that's what you're going to get in your report is, oh, yeah, we used this. Uh, uh, we we unpatched the SXI yeah. server. <laughs> We use this unpatched Windows vulnerability. We we got on the box. We were able to pull uh, credentials out of memory. We used them to move laterally, right? Like we escalated to a domain admin by pulling credentials out of memory with Mimikatz, right? And then, and then you're done. And it's like, well, okay. Those are all things that maybe you should have had fixed before you got a pen test. Yeah, you want to fix the obvious things because you're doing yourself a disservice. If the pen tester comes in and uses the first thing they find, they're not going to go back and go, I'm looking for the next hardest way to do this. They find the yeah. easiest way as Correct. based on the it, scope and we move laterally. But that didn't really solve your problem because what if there was actually a little yeah. bit more complex way they could have got in? And it was just because you had an unpatched ESXi server or something that was essentially an obvious thing, you know, patching your firewalls, etc. So you really want to have as much done as possible that's where vulnerability scans just yeah. come in and once you have all that done then you want them to do you want to make it yeah. hard for them. yeah <laughs> yeah and i mean this segues perfectly into like let's talk about you know based on our little outline we're using here right like and i'll what share a it in a forum is. post down in the links below so people yeah. can have the outline of the scoping of a pen test and all the steps pen tests are typically time boxed engagements Right. So when you actually hire a pen tester, you're not hiring them to pen test your application because, you know, you can literally throw stuff at the wall forever. Uh, what you typically are hiring is a fixed scope. Right. And, and typically it'll be a set amount of time a week, two weeks is pretty common. Uh, and then on top of that, there'll be a couple of days to end up writing up the report. Right. So. You know, you'll see something like, uh, uh, you know, a 40 plus eight where it's like they're going to throw they're going to spend 40 hours trying to break into your stuff. And then they're going to spend eight hours at the end of it, gathering up all their notes and and, you know, writing up the report that you get. That that doesn't mean if they were unsuccessful <clears throat> that you're safe. Right. It just means that in the 40 hours they had to do it, they weren't able to do it. So, you know, to the point, if they do 
quickly and easily get in and move laterally and you know they've got that done in 10 hours then yeah they may they may look for other ways to do it a non-zero amount of time just goes into initial discovery initial uh access initial looking at mapping the environment yeah it's the it's this is time box they, they go until they're out of time and then they spend the time writing the report and it's one of the reasons when you decide the scoping for this and in the realm that we usually work in for pen testing you're going to want to define and give us some of the information because that counts against your hours if you want me to go yeah. hunt it down or you know really dig around to use some OSINT to figure out where all your yeah. infrastructure is. It's probably faster just to let us know where it is. Assume someone discovered yep. it. A lot of stuff is. Hopefully you don't have things really publicly exposed, but you want to get us to the part where we're testing things as fast as possible. Yeah. And that's, I mean, for sure there, and there's a couple ways to do this, right? Like there's, you know, typically black box, gray box, white box, right? Where it's a uh, black box. I don't know anything about the system. You know, you just give me the domain name or the web app and it's entirely on me to do it. You know, gray box, maybe you give me logins, right? Like in some doc API documentation, whereas white box, I would typically, if it's say an application, I typically have access to the source or I'd have network diagrams or I'd know what all the systems do. They each serve their own purpose, right? Like, but that's one of the first questions that I will ask when asked whether to do this is like, what, what kind of thing are we looking at here? Is this a, you know, a gray, white or black? black box and I'll, we'll explain each of those things when we do it but they they definitely change the amount of time it's going to take me to do it and it definitely changes the, the scope uh, to a certain extent so you know knowing that going in is actually really helpful one of the things you want to that's going to happen is you're going to have to define the rules right like uh because i well, anyone that's been to a conference with me knows that, you know, you define those lines. I will color right up against them. Yep. I will do my best to not color over them, uh, <laughs> but I, I will be calling it at the edge. Uh, and so if you have legal requirements or you have things that I'm absolutely not allowed to hit or people I'm not allowed to talk to, those things need called out. Because otherwise, if you don't tell me I can't do it or you don't tell me that I'm only allowed to do things that are explicitly in scope, then everything is in scope and I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I'm going to be trying to, you know, social engineer your employees and all sorts of other fun things. Yeah. I always recommend people listen to one of my favorite episodes, which is Jeremy from marketing of Darknet diaries. That's a great one where they, you know, they do define the engagement, but it does go into engaging employees to get yep. to FA codes and things like that. It, it comes down to scoping in time. Like we said in the beginning of how much of this do you want us to find out? Yeah. You know, what is the rules of engagement here? Because yeah, cool. You're thinking you're safe with two FA, but the reality is as that podcast proved a little bit of a spoiler. Yes. People will read you two FA codes off of phones. Yep. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. They will, you know, back to the very high level piece of this, right? Like that's the thing that most people don't understand. It's like they have some sort of regulatory requirement that they get a pen test, but they're not necessarily actually after a pen test uh, because marketing ruins all things. Yeah. Uh, so, which so, is why we're making this video because yeah. marketing around pen tests, um, sometimes yeah. they start at a price that doesn't make any sense. And it's not yeah. exactly it's, what we would call a pen test no. as in me and you. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of eroded away the word pen test, right? Where a lot of times, you know, vulnerability scan or vulnerability scan plus people are calling a pen test and it's not, I would consider uh, I would I wouldn't consider that a pen test, but it seems like the common lexicon is now starting to consider that a pen test. So maybe we need to call this a red team engagement, right? Like instead of a yeah. pen test, because that's essentially what we're talking about here. I mean, know that they're expensive, right? Like, it, it, you know, we're talking it, probably 40 hours minimum plus eight hours to write a report, right? So 48 hours at oh, three, four hundred dollars an hour. Yep. You know, this isn't a small amount of money, so it's very important to understand what you're getting into before you, you know, you drive down this road. Yeah, I think that's a really important aspect. So let's go a little further down there. One of yep. the questions that's probably going to come up a lot is custom applications or some of these one-off, non-common industry applications. Move it's in the news here in 2023 a lot, but obviously there's been companies that went through pen tests we have to define which applications are going to be tested and how extensively yeah. they're going to be tested because fuzzing an application until it breaks may or may not be in scope and also can be, yeah. it's an important aspect, but uh, it's one of those things that may not, you have to really kind of carve out. Yeah, it's really, so web application testing in particular is really hard. You basically just throw stuff at the wall, like, oh, that might be injectable. Then, you know, you spend 
six hours trying to inject something only to go, ah, no, that wasn't actually injectable. Then you move on to the next thing. Oh, maybe I can do some uh, authentication bypass stuff here. And then you you know, spend six hours trying to get it to work and it doesn't work. And they're like, okay, they protect it against that. Uh, you end up down these rabbit holes that, you know, you easily sink hours into this looks like it could be a thing. And then it turns out that some downstream system protects it in a way that isn't immediately obvious to you. So you end up just wasting a bunch of time going down a road there. With web applications and applications in particular, they tend to be somewhat longer engagements if you want to do them correctly. And just because you don't have any findings, it is, I'm sure a lot of these companies that have been hit recently can tell you just because you don't have any findings doesn't mean that you're safe. It just means that you're safe from the, some of the easier low hanging fruit. Yeah. And this is something to, to think about too, because you can't just take, hey, I had a pen test. I'm good. No one can ever get in this system. And it can be a bit of a challenge because of these other vulnerabilities and new techniques that come out all the time. This is an ever evolving, not a static type of thing that happens. Yeah. It's not like, here's the checklist. This is the only things we do. We may have a checklist of the processes we follow, but when it comes to techniques, that's the ever evolving part that, yeah. hey, a pen test from even two years ago is not the same as it is yeah. today because the techniques have evolved. Um, a few resources I'm gonna throw out there and recommend here as, as we get to the end of this, check out like the Black Hill Cyber Talks. They're definitely, stuff. If you just want to go deep, just how crazy some of these pen tests are. It's one of those further reading things besides any of the dark net diaries, any of the red team stuff on a dark net diaries is always a whole lot of fun. Yeah, any other uh, resources you think of Jason, or you'd probably recommend? No, there's uh, I'll send you a couple like basically pen tester workbooks, worksheets, stuff like that. Right. So like anything as as we covered earlier in this, when you do your first one of these, uh, giving as much information as possible is probably in your favor, right? Because they don't have to spend a bunch of time uh, gathering information and, you know, it may lead to uh, your an ability to do a slightly shorter engagement. If you're up for it, right? Like the, a lot of easy stuff is covered in various pen testing workbooks and they talk about a bunch of tools, you know, poke at your own things and fix the things you find before you pay a very expensive resource to find, make them work for their route. You want them to really have to use yeah. that hacker mindset. Don't give us something really basic or we're yeah. just going to pop it. And <laughs> yep. All right. Well, everything will be linked in the forum post down below and uh, thank you. Okay, cool. Thanks.